Hello, my name is Tony from Intelligent UES and SUES.com. Today I'm going to walk you through a few changes that we have done to the Viewer Touch Smart Gim Gimmer System series. Last instruction video, I've shown you quite a few things how to mount on Phantom 4, how to man mount on Inspire 2, and then uh, how to turn it on and make use of the system. Today, I'm going to walk you through a few changes. For, for example, since then, we have updated our gimbal to make it 3D and also the Viewer Touch Pro now can be mounted on Phantom 4 or Phantom 3 and then the Viewer Touch Standard now has the same form factor as Viewer Touch Pro also FLIR has updated their app so I will take this chance to walk you through the changes in the app as well and how to set, set up your camera, View Pro camera if you have have not purchased the view pro from us. Okay. So without further ado, let me start. Okay, so here is the viewer touch gimbal system with gimbal and camera and the controller right here. Um the viewer touch standard and the viewer touch pro will look at pretty much identical, but the pro has two different things. It has a port for GPS to plug in and it has an SD card slot for GPS logging. Okay, so it's a 3D 3-axis gimbal instead of 2D, so it stabilizes the image a little better uh, with the horizontal direction. You mount on Phantom 4 the same way for the standard and the Pro. If you purchase a Pro, it comes with a GPS. If, if, if standard, it doesn't come with. You have a little piece of uh, strong Velcro here, and you can Velcro it on. You can also use another stretch of Velcro uh, band to Velcro it on, so it makes it even stronger, so it won't fall during flight. All right, and then after you've done that, you just wrap this wire around two, maybe three times, and then it comes with the plug already, so you just plug it in. There's only one way to plug in. Okay, you turn it on um, same way. There are a few changes in design. So here's the battery compartment of the gimbal. It's in it's it's access in the front. Now you just open it and then you know open the door all the way out. And then this little tap here, you can pull it out. And then that's it. You want to replace the battery, you can just use a fresh new battery that you have charged overnight. Okay, so we recommend that you buy at least six of these from us or more. To replace the battery again, uh, you just need to slide it in. But there's only one way to slide in. Of course, you look inside, the, the bigger circle here will go into the smaller one, and the smaller one will go into the bigger one inside. If you install it the right way, it will go all the way in and you can close the battery door. Uh, if you install it, the other way, wrong way, it will not go in and you can't close. Uh, so don't force it. The design is different from the, the previous one. It's uh, in such improvement because now it doesn't matter if you turn on or off the switch, you can, you will not do any harm to the system. So we, we still recommend, of course, turning off, but if you forget, it doesn't harm the system. The same goes for the, the touch controller. It has a better door right here and you open it all the way out. We have made, made it stronger, you know, the better door thicker so it won't break easily. Uh, it has the same design. So turn the monitor on, turn the... Um, it doesn't matter the sequence anyway. So turn everything on. So it, because it has, the system has its own batteries, it doesn't need to the phantom to be on to function okay so uh, when you turn it on you can see that this is a pro version but the standard version is similar it just doesn't have so many tabs um, it has a tab say that says start here all control so you want to start with that and there's the control uh, interface you can uh, tilt the gimbal for example when you slide this gimbal mode slider to all the way to the right you can uh, you can pan it already and then you can reset the gimbal by sliding it to the middle 
Um, now, the difference between these modes, uh, this mode is called FPV mode, which you probably barely use. Yeah, you can't control tilt or pan, it will follow the angle of the aircraft. Um, uh, on the, the mode on the left, you can tilt um, only. Uh, it will follow the direction of the aircraft uh, when you, whenever you pan the aircraft. Uh, the other mode, you can pan, all right? It will not follow the, it will keep its, uh, its own direction. It says it's mine of its own. And here are a few other buttons. Um, so for example, you can um, start or record a video with, with this button. And then, or picture, uh, you can reset the camera, FFC, recalibrate. And you can change the color palettes right here by sliding this um, slider. This calls palette, and then you can do digital zoom on the monitor, and then two uh, x, four x. Okay. And then here, if you you purchase the just the pro version, it's come with a gesture mode, so you can mount it on the controller and then it will tilt or pan according to your panning or tilting the monitor um, so it make it easier for you to to search for an objects um, while this the drone is stationary at some point so instead of using these to search around to slide around you can use the monitor very intuitive and convenient for you to find an object and then often when you tilt too much uh, you find yourself looking at, to the ground you want to preset your position by quickly move the controller to a position you, that you like uh, by moving this quickly um, it tells the system oh okay the, the pilot needs to reset his own position so don't move so the gimbal will keep it on position and it will not move also in the gesture mode you can zoom and change the color palettes just by shaking the controller gently doing that sideways three times would change the color palettes while moving it back to front three times would change the zoom okay when you're done you can turn off that turn off that gesture mode and then reset the camera all right. Um, that is for Viewer Touch Pro. Uh, the Viewer Touch Standard will not come with this feature. And then you can go to the home screen, and then you can have a bigger screen for you know pan and tilt. And then you can go to camera control only, bigger buttons and things like that for you do the controlling. And then there's a instruction screen right here. So you can read, you know, if you get something, you can do so. Uh, for GPS, uh, first, you need to turn on the map link feature on the View Pro itself. When you do so, uh, the FFC and Zoom features will be disabled because they use the same channels at the map link views. Um, and then when you fly outside, uh, this GPS satellite number instead of zero, it will show some number. Uh, we recommend that you do any geotagging when the satellite uh, number is at least seven or more. And then before you start anything, uh, you just need to turn on toggle the map link, and it says here the map link is on, zoom or FFC is disabled. And then you go to all control, and then of course it has to be in the uh, single or multiple uh, picture mode for the um, GPS geo tagging to be saved to the 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 pictures. All right, so this again only comes uh, in the pro version. So gesture mode, map link, GPS only available on the pro version. The standard will not have this feature but it has other functions, other features. 
Now I'm going to show you guys how to use the FLIR UAS app to set up to prepare the view, uh, FLIR View Pro to for it to work with the Viewer Touch Pro um, or standard. There are two ways to do it. Um, either you install the View Pro on the on the gimbal and then turn the system on, turn it on and then wait for the for the view pro to boot up you will hear the sound or this the other way is to use the bench cable that is included by FLIR and then plug it into a USB port of the computer or a charger and then wait for, for it to boot like that sound and then you can set it up uh, now turn on, remember to turn on the Bluetooth on the phone and then open the app, go ahead and open the app and then the app will load and it will see the camera uh, but, and then you click on that and wait for it to connect here is the monitor, okay, so on the, th on the load, the startup screen you can see this um, if it's a Flivu Pro radiometric, you have this measure thing tab here if it's a uh, non radiometric you don't see that and below here on the bottom you see the various modes of the flavor pro you have single picture multiple picture for which you can set the interval at which it would t automatic automatically take pictures repeatedly uh, maybe one second or uh, more seconds you can do time lapse and you can do video. So remember, only the single mode or multiple mode will work for the uh, geotagging mode. So you need to do the flip image for the image to show up correctly on the monitor here. You can change color palettes, a lot of things here, but then of course um, the controller will do that. You can go to the controller tab, and if you have a viewer touch standard or you don't want to use mapping or geotagging, you want to turn on the PWM protocol instead of mapping and then set PWM1 to do FFC and PWM1 to do IR zoom and then you can select and you know state 3 by default the PWM3 and PWM4 are set to record start stop video or picture and IR color palettes respectively all right and if you want to change the map link and do the geotagging with the viewer touch pro not just with not with standard then click the map link and then that's you're done you're set for viewer touch pro to do geotagging and when you fly outside uh, remember again to press the button toggle map link before you take pictures, uh, watch the GPS satellite on the controller monitor here. If the satellites seven or more are connected, then you have geotagging successfully. If less than that, you, you might want to wait a little bit for the module to hook up with more satellites. Okay, so that's geotagging. Now, if you have an Inspire one, we've included a adapter mount, mount adapter like this to go on the back of the Inspire um, now I'm going to show you how to mount this uh, first of all you will need a star key a star shaped key uh, two, millim two millimeter wide or it's called T8 T8 and then you would undo these two screws on the bottom already and then you're going to change the star key to a hex key a two millimeter two millimeter hex key and then we already included two screws for you in this bag and then what you're going to do is Put them in and secure the mount adapter to this to the back of the inspire. 